I'm taking a very simple example. We have forecast data, we have sales data, we have a simple of five product categories at the high level. And again, my intention right now is to show you how the formula editor experience helps. So now I may have requirements where I need to insert a column or insert a row. And uh, let me quickly show you how this experience works. Let's say if I want to enter a variance. So I can go to column because we want to add a column and I click on insert formula. It's going to create me a new column. And this is where I can give a name for this new measure and I can start typing in formula. So let's say I want to calculate variance percentage. Now, the moment I go and click on this, it's going to give me some references. So what are these references? So I have 2022 forecast, 2022 sales, and it can also reference itself. And I can also use subcategory, and I'll come to that uh, in a couple of minutes. But what I want to do here is I want to calculate 20. So as I start typing in the context sensitive help also gives me uh, let's say sales minus uh, forecast and then uh, divided by uh, forecast, right? So which will give me the percentage value. But before I do this, I see that everything is scaled to millions and I don't want the scale to millions, so I go home and then I'm going to change the scaling for my table. Uh, I'm going to have a measure level scaling. Okay, that thing disappeared, so let me go and update this once again. So uh, it's here, new measure. So basically variance percentage and then 2022 sales minus forecast divided by forecast, sorry, uh, forecast. And then I click on update and then it's going to show me these percentages. I just go home and change the field value to percentages and maybe reduce it as well, right? And this is how the simple variance calculation uh, works. And um, I can also insert a conditional statement here. For example, I can directly go in and type in an if statement. Very simple. And here, what I can put is I can start bringing in the subcategories as well, right? So for example, I can go to this reference right now and I can select subcategory equal to, uh, let's say, soda, then enter, let's say, I think 0.2, otherwise enter it as zero. And so it's going to show me 20%, which is 0.2. So I can do conditional statements here as well. The only thing is this is a little bit more advanced because it's going to give me a set of uh, references that I can use. It also gives me a set of references which has uh, certain reference keywords as well as functions, right? So for example, level is a reference uh, keyword. So what it means is when I go and just type in level and then press update. So basically what it means is it tells you that we are in the first level in the hierarchy and this is level two in the hierarchy. So anytime, if you want to, let's say, for example, based on the level of the hierarchy, if you want to apply conditional formatting, you can first create a field like this and then use this field in your conditional formatting statement. So I can use these reference keywords like this, or I can use uh, certain functions like absolute, uh, count, count if, floor, a um, lot of Boolean functions are available. And then you can you also have text functions, right? Mid, minimum, uh, right, left, and so forth. Uh, PCT, I think PMT is for interest calculation. There is also a random number generator. So we have tried to provide as many functions as possible, which is going to make your life easier. And um, I cannot begin to think how we'll use uh, some of this in DAX because uh, InfoRiver can do a lot of cell level references, measure level references. You can even refer uh, categories directly. This is one of the key items. And um, I'll come to row aggregation in a little bit, but this is how the formula engine works.